Right, so to remind you, the idea was to use ChatGPT to assist you to write a structured literature review on a subject of your choice. Now, if I look at this uh, essay, the first thing that impresses me is that I find a table of contents, which means that the student used the uh, settings of the uh, word processor by using styles and so on. Also, it makes it easy for me to see what's going on. First, there's an abstract, which there should be an introduction, a methodology. Then he divides it into two bits, current applications and potential applications, which is a very good way of doing it. Then there's a conclusion, there's a bibliography, which we would really call references, that's preferable. And then as I requested, the chat GPT prompts. So let's have a look. Here is the, in, the uh, title, current and potential applications of AI and machine learning in agriculture. Now, just as an aside, why do we have AI as a capital letter and then machine learning small letters? I would prefer to have AI as a written out as well, current and potential applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning in agriculture. Now, the nice thing about the title is that it explains exactly what the student is doing, current applications, potential applications. So um, let's have a look at um, the abstract, the present and perspective. So current and future, that's of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And he introduces the abbreviations, which is correct, one does that, are reviewed in this structured literature review. The review seeks to explore the various applications of architecture, including precision farming, crop monitoring, disease detection, yield protection. Now you'll notice that we're gonna look for these things as we write. Now, how was it done? So it was restricted to work between 2010 and 2023. Systematic review technique and overview uh, was created using data extracted from the articles. Um, the article emphasizes various uses, including disease detection and protection, uh, plant breeding and precision architecture. Now you see here, I'm already getting a little bit worried because there we've got uh, a set of things that you're talking about. And here you've got a set of things that you're talking about and they don't talk to each other, uh, including disease detection, prediction, plant breeding and precision architecture. Here it's yield prediction, farming. So it's a little bit, these two things should really be put together. Through examples of studies that acceptably use this, um, the review's objective is to offer knowledge that can guide the creation of AI and ML-based agricultural solutions, eventually promoting productive, sustainable farming. Then I don't know what this MET is, so you just need to have a look at that. Uh, and let's have a look. Introduction is a typical generic introduction. Agriculture remains a critical, blah, 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 which doesn't really say much, but it's all right. Host of concerns. These include climate change, pest outbreaks, declining soil, and recent years, AI and machine learning have emerged as promising technologies, which is very good. By enabling precise and has the potential, so that's very nice as well. Several studies have been conducted to look at the current and uh, potential applications. For instance, Ahmed and Usman and Camelus and G. And now here is where suddenly um, I start looking at certain things. So we're looking for us, Ahmed, Usman, Camelus and G. So let's go to the references. And we don't find Ahmed. We have, we found Camillaris, we haven't found G. And we're looking, and we're also are not finding Usman. So now we're already a bit suspicious about what's going on here. But it gives us this. In addition, several studies have explored the effectiveness of AI ML techniques in specific uh, Africa. And these guys looked at deep learning, clock classification. So that's Salim and Shin. 
let's see if they're in the bibliography. There's Salim, but there's no Shem. So again, we're getting a little bit suspicious of what's going on here. Uh, the review will explore various. Um, now let's go on. Overall, these studies demonstrate the potential. And this is very important for me, that you have an actual research question. But remember, a research question ends with a question mark. So uh, let's go to review, track uh, changes, and we just add a question mark there, as well as provide current state. The review will explore various areas where it can be done, such as now this is okay that's fine because this comes from the abstract as well through this literature what the aim is we hope to provide insights now the other thing of course is you're a single author so it should not be we it should be i hope um right now we go methodology give the goal which is correct we give the limitations of the articles uh those are the words uh, the ter search terms that were word uh, specific criteria for selecting articles that were relevant and those were the articles that were included conversely those are the articles that were excluded um, and there we aim to provide a comprehensive and reliable overview so that's very good i just don't at this stage i'm not convinced that you actually did this. I just know that uh, the, th this is being said. Overall, this systematic review wants to give a comprehensive evidence-based overview of the current and potential applications of AI. I like that. Now, we do exactly as I said, what are the current applications? And the current applications, one of the main one is precision architecture. This is what uh, agriculture, this is what precision agriculture are. And now, several studies have demonstrated the potential. For example, Wang et al. Let's have a look if Wang are there. Whoops. So, again, I'm a little worried here. Uh, and then Guo et al. Nitrogen, plant breed. Now we go to plant breeding. So the first application was precision architecture. The second one is plant breeding. Now we go back to the introduction and see if that's what we said. Not architecture, agriculture, precision agriculture, plant breeding. Look at introduction. I'm trying to find where we said precision agriculture and plant breeding. Because you see, we have to keep these things in the same sequence. Where's the abstract now? Okay, here we've got plant breeding and precision agriculture, and then disease detection. You have to have them in the same sequence though. If you put them up there in that way, then you have to put them here. So that's precision architecture, plant breeding. Now look at the other thing. Several studies have demonstrated the, and this rhythm I see all the time, seven, several studies have demonstrated the potential of, several studies have demonstrated the, and then you'll probably find another application there. Several studies have demonstrated, and here's the disease identification and prediction, so we have those three, so that's good. But you see what's happening here. The AI is using standard terms again and again and we can we, we can see that uh so lee et al disease identification protection uh let's have a look at mohanti if that is there lynn ah mohanti is there uh now we go for instance farmers can use drones equipped with cameras this can these are good examples. In addition to pet, pest detection, um, Liu et al. I think we did find Lin Lu, but we haven't got. 
Then we've got lots of Lu's, but it's Lu et al. So I'm not sure whether it's the same one. Um, so we go on. This information can be used. Now, for example, machine learning algorithm could recommend most effective fungus side and so on. So all in all, this is a really good summary of the literature, except that I'm not sure that it's the literature that you have in the, in the bibliography. Conclusion, it's given us an overview. It's demonstrated that it can do this uh, in various fields. And here they are, precision farming, crop monitoring, disease detection, and yield protection. Now I would, if I had more time to go crop diseases, disease detection, precision irrigation systems, crop monitoring is there. But again, try and put them in the correct sequence. Um, so that's the advantages, robotics. However, the adoption of AI and ML also produces several challenges, including costs. Now, there, there's no evidence of this in the rest of the article. So uh, ChatGPT just made this up for you. There, there needs to be literature in the literature survey here. And I would suggest that you put the disadvantages at the end of future and the disadvantages at the end of, of present, uh, and that'll help you with that. Um, despite these studies, have the studies reviewed suggest that AI might have good uh, by enabling more precise and efficient farming practices. I would buy that. Structured literature review highlights the importance of continued research. Does it? I didn't see any words about the importance of, of continued research. So again, it's something just made up. Um, obviously, there is a need, but the, the review doesn't say that. By addressing the challenges, now you see, if you're going to talk about the challenges, you've got to have a section about the challenges. Um, and then ML, AI and ML can help ensure the continued productivity. So that's good. Now let's have a look at the prompts. Please summarize 10 publications within the last decade that highlight the use or potential use of. So you see, that's what it then did. It, um, it went and fetched its own 10 publications instead of using the 20 publications that you were asked to do. Um, then write a detailed example of what each of the literature review should look like and what contents it should, which it obviously did for you. And I love this. Put the above, above mentioned papers into bibliography format, which it did really well. Improve the introduction, improve the body, improve the conclusion. That's good. So all in all, this shows you how ChatGPT can be a really good start back and you're going to have to find those various uh, bits of your article and so on. So, yes, uh, I think this has been a good example.